So, uh, uh, yeah, what? Wait a second. I need to share my screen once again. Um, Okay, uh, I suppose now you can see my screen. Do you hear me well? Just to check. Give me some. Great. Thank you. Uh, all right. So today's uh, tutorial is about um, uh, MLOPS and touching on modeling a little bit. Um, What's well, modeling and MLOPS, basically? Uh, Okay, so just jumping right in. We have talked about MLOPS before on MLOPS cycle. Uh, MLOPS, of course, it stands for machine learning operations. And it comes, uh, well, it's kind of inspired or like uh, shares a lot with DevOps, uh, which um, like uh, it's streamlining the processes that are included in a machine learning um, project development uh, um, cycle. So it takes, you can see in this, uh, um, and I hope you are seeing really, in this cycle, uh, you can think like you are starting with the data in the ABA, then we, the, the, we do data pre-processing, um, so we know the EDA, we're, we're looking, analyzing the data, uh, looking for like some insights, um, seeing patterns and stuff. Then uh, data pre-processing is going to be transforming the data into a form that is going to be like a user, um, to be used in a machine learning model. So that will include like what we talked, we discussed yesterday, scaling, um like uh, standardization maybe dimensionality reduction all of that um uh, then the next step is developing the machine learning model itself um so in that in that step uh it's going to be like you are training the model you are fine-tuning the model and uh, like uh, fixing the hyperparameters uh, and like doing this, um, uh, splitting the data into like uh, 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 training, evaluation, and testing uh, parts. So in the the evaluation part is like basically responsible for like when you are fine tuning the hyperparameters of your model. Then uh, you can um, review your model. So this uh, the next step like evaluating the model and uh, evaluating the results are they in like uh, if they are satisfactory like they reach the whatever the pre, pre previously set uh, metric or like a uh, requirement you're going to deploy them uh, uh, to deploy the model but uh, as the model is deployed and it is used uh, like it is, and uh, we can make inferences from it that is going to generate more data. Uh, so the model that is deployed has to be monitored, um, like monitored for like performance. And uh, with that, like uh, while it is deployed, we are generating more data and that you can like basically go back and forth on this cycle. So it's like a continuous cycle um interacting so the whole idea of like uh, the goal of having um, uh, MLOps is uh, um basically maintaining the cycle in in and making it work uh uh in a synchronous way basically all of these processes okay all these processes which are like other several 
steps, several like processes that have to be working um, in tandem, basically. And uh, and it's not it's not a, it doesn't have like a, an end point. It's continuous. That's why you need this. So like here yeah, here like I already talked about this. Uh, like this this several steps we mentioned about like uh, we talked about. I'm sorry. And um, so, yeah, there's no need to go over this uh, more, I think. Uh, OK. Um, right. So, yeah, an important part here we maybe I didn't talk about is model versioning, right? When you are like monitoring the, of monitoring the model also before that, like when you are developing the model itself, the models, uh it's it's a uh, model version is similar to code versioning like what you do is like with git um use different tools for model versionings but uh here like you are saving as you do with code when you're versioning code what you are doing is that you're saving like uh, the versions history like you have the code and you're making co uh, changes in the code and you're like saving the versions are you, as you go along. So that basically the use of that is that uh, in, in principle you can go back if you need to, if the, some changes you did like destroyed how, how, how the software was working, you can go back, roll back uh, the changes. Uh, in the case of models, uh, like you can make a model, like you have uh, like the metrics, the, um, the parameters, how they were fixed, how it was trained, and you like uh, save the parameters of the model. You save the result of the model of how it was run. And um, if you make like a new versions of the model, you save each one of them. You save each experiment, and you can roll back the the like to go. You can go back to an earlier version of the model if you think that was like performing better you can just go back very easily you can also um with like uh, these tools that uh, allow you to do model versioning you can also like kind of monitor the model um and compare different versions okay uh, just going into like what tools you use of course like in the development and uh, model training you use these machine learning uh, frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch or KitLearn. Um, in the, the version control, experiment tracking, of course, the version control system, you have Git, this is for the code, but for the experiment tracking, you have MLflow. This is like a basic example. You have also weight and biases. These are specifically like um, maybe more geared to AI, uh, sorry, to generative AI models, but like you can use both. Uh, Oh, any of them uh, okay so uh, there's also the de deployment and serving uh, part um the different uh, frameworks for serving the the models and um uh, and there's also contra containerization okay so um docker basically dockerizing um as we like maybe talked about a little bit before um Dockerizing software. So, what we can like discuss a little bit more about is MLflow, the experiment tracking tool, and Docker for containerization. Uh, give me one minute. Second. Um, Okay, so any questions so far? Just this basic kind of introduction. So, uh, if any question arises, please just uh, like raise your hand or interrupt right away. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about Docker here. So, a uh, docker um like basically in docker you, you have 
containers. What containers are are the isolated environment within your machine, basically. So where you can run your applications in whatever environment you want. So suppose you're working right now, you're working on your local machine, you have an environment where like you're installed, like a, a particular, you have a particular operating system, a particular version of, uh, let's say, Ubuntu, and like a particular version of Python, a particular versions of like different libraries, and uh, it works your software like whatever or like the code you developed worked runs perfectly if you import the same the same code into a different machine with different like uh, or like a uh, uh, operating system uh, and like uh, like uh, uh, environment uh, specifications it might not run as well or it might fail to run so uh, when you put your code into a container or you run your code inside the container, anyone can take, anyone can basically, what you do is you're going to make an, a Docker image, basically, which specifies like basically what, uh, what is needed to run the code, what is the code and what is like the environment that is needed to run the code. They starting with the operating system and everything else. And then uh, anyone from this image can, can create, as long as they have Docker, they can create a container with these specific, with these specifications, just from the Docker image, and then they, can, they are able to run uh, this uh, container on their machines and everything will run exactly the same as in any other container with the same specifications. Okay, this is an idea of, of Docker uh so as, as this is the thing i talked about there is like the basic things are a container which is a unit like uh the code the application code and the required libraries and then the docker image is uh is like basically is um the blueprint for the container so uh how do you use this first you have to have docker Right. You have to install Docker first, and this is like uh, it's not always um, you have to figure it out because like uh, it will be different for different operating systems, of course. Um, but like follow the official uh, documentations if you haven't done this already. Um, in uh, then what you do is you have to create a Docker file. Um, from um, uh, for your like uh, for your environment, okay. So this will take uh, container information about like the code and and uh, and the the requirements uh, for like the library. So here the steps are required like as uh, they are listed that you have to create a requirement.txt file because then you can say you can copy okay maybe i should show you an example exactly so this can be like easier to do let me actually do this uh, uh so basically yeah so it will be we're going what we're going to do uh, and maybe i can show you um like uh, an actual um demo of this going to create a like a requirement that the file uh, yes and uh we we're going to create a docker file from that you can create an image and uh once you have an image you can run it you are you can basically um run an image and of course you can publish the image so that anyone else can also use it uh okay um All right. Uh, so I guess I'm just uh, contemplating actually doing this to see like the time. Brenda's going doing this actually is going to take um, time that we might not have. Um, I don't know. Maybe the steps here are clear, but. Um, Okay, 
Okay, just one moment. Just sorry. Uh, so I'm back. Uh, while I'm actually going to show you a Docker file, uh, and then you can ask questions about that. But in, in the meanwhile, you can ask questions if you have any. Um, any questions? Am I actually on? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so, okay, maybe I can like uh, show you this in real life. Uh, um, I, I hope that I'm not like you have a um, submission today, so I'm, I'm, I will try not to not to take so much time but yes like uh let's do this together so i'm gonna create here let's say that this is my um whatever this is a project i want to decorize uh, what i'm going to do is going to create a docker file here and it has to be called the docker file exactly like that and you can see because like I have, this is base code and it's, I don't know if you, can you see the screen well? Yeah, okay, great. Uh, uh, so um, the first thing you, you write in, in uh, um, here is like basically, um, the base in, in of the of the docker file of the sorry of the of your container so like in a sense the let's say the operating system it will going to be working on so it can be like uh, open open to uh um is it is it like uh this is me um sorry so let's see okay I have an example here. Um, so yeah, okay. Let's. Uh, so it's capitalized. 
And uh, this is just an example, but um, let's say like this are not necessary in my case. And um, right, so okay. Here it's um, what what I'm doing. It's like okay. This was an example a Docker image I had on, but um, not that I can remember. Like let me see. Uh, no. Let's see. Okay. For example, this is an example very simple. So, um, uh, so this is an example from uh, from the doctor uh, documentation itself. I want to use something different, but okay, this is fine. So, okay, like um, I'm just going to to show you here. Like, okay, this is just an. Uh, I think this is an Ubuntu system right what sure like uh explain somewhere here so Albine, it's like uh um okay let's just hope it will work and it's uh, it's not should be fine anyway what i'm going to say to to do is is going to be like because i have a requirement it's okay it's not actually um build so let me pick freeze here um this minus r require txt okay um wait give me a mistake sorry i should um is it no. they always like making a mistake here, but sorry. <laughs> it's um without that R the R. That's great. Um so now I have like my requirement dot uh, txt. So this is like how to create the environment that I'm working in, right? And uh, what I'm doing here in my Docker file, I'm telling um, the, it to copy the requirement uh, .txt file from my local, um, my local, uh, the local directory. So because the Docker file is here and the requirement .txt is here, so it's going to copy this one. I'm going to pip install everything from this file. So I'm going to create the Python environment for it. And then um it's, it's not here part of this. Uh and then uh let's say I will say work directory is uh, um okay, some like this directory will be created inside the container, okay. This this uh, uh, line is going to copy everything I have in this directory here into the the directory this app directory inside the container. And uh, okay, this is like something that's not necessary, but I could basically run anything I want basically inside this container, like um, when when it uh, while it was it is created. So it's a, like a one time run command and then i could maybe let's say i had some kind of um uh let's see python okay and then let's supposedly let's say i have for example i have in this uh, um directory i have this train.py file i can run it i can tell uh my like what is this is so cmd is like the command that will be run every time that uh, the container is is started okay is um 
is um, yeah, one is the container size. So this will be so let's say it's a call ML flow or okay, let's say create one outside. Let's say I create it here. Okay. Um, I don't know, like my app dot I don't know. It's just some kind of I have some kind of um whatever. It's like a, a Python code, right? And I want to run this one. So I will just tell my doctor to do this. So because this is on my working directory, I could actually just do this because it's already there. Working directory means it's going to run this um, command inside the working directory. So I don't need to write to tell it like the absolute um, path, but I could actually write the, the full path, okay? So now I have this, I have this code, sorry. Uh, Clear so my terminal in the terminal. Let's see if my this my is my docker running. Uh, no, wait a second. Uh, I have to run docker because I'm on. So, this is for um, they have windows. Okay, let's see, like while it's uh, starting. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so is there any, any questions while I'm waiting for Docker to start running? Uh, I'm sorry if like uh, this wasn't um, not I'm taking too much time because I wasn't planning to on doing this, but I thought like it would be clearer to see. Uh, um, Okay, let me just uh, so for the other second, let's see like my docker instance start running. Okay. Okay. So, Docker is starting up. Um, starting the Docker engine. So. I want to install Docker on like uh, in Ubuntu. It's like uh, works uh, like all the time. Well, here I need to start Docker engine every like when I want to use it. Um, uh, it's taking some time to to start. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but okay. So once it does, uh, we're going to to use. A command uh, Docker. Uh, I, I never like keep like the um, so okay. I, I want to tell you also about Docker Compose, but um, let's keep this for now. So um, Docker Compose in another like uh, a way to to also uh, 
well we, we use the cook compose when you are have you when you have like uh uh you're instead of running just one container you can run multiple containers at the same time and this is useful when for example you have different parts of your like application and you want to run each one of them separately which is a good practice like it's a good practice to to break down um uh, the application into parts for example maybe part of uh, your application is using postgres which is actually the case in your uh, <laughs> in your case it's uh, actually true and um so instead of like having like one container that have everything instead you can have like the database uh, separately from like the the running like front end maybe and uh then but you ha they have to work together so in order to do that you you build uh, um instead of building like one image you you can use docker compose so you'll have multiple docker files each representing a particular image for a particular container but then you have like a docker compose um yaml file which will tell you how to like uh, um run these multiple containers together in one network and how they will share data like using what's called the docker uh, volume um okay uh it's taking forever to run i'm just very sorry for that but once it does i will be able to use um okay is that a question yeah, is it because you are on Windows OS that is why it is taking uh, forever to load? I yeah, I don't know exactly why it's taking forever to load the right this minute because it takes some time for me to load sometimes. But um, yeah, the thing is that uh, yeah, it's um, probably it's partially because of that. what I'm telling you is that if you are not on Windows, you don't need to once you install like for example if you are like on Ubuntu or even on mac you install like docker engine directly and uh, then uh, um it's always there you can always run the docker commands directly you don't need to start them i think that is possible to stop it for some of the purpose of course but it will be just running all the time the installing docker on windows is a bit of a headache because you still you need the wsl to 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 so you have to install WSL first, and then you can install the, the Docker desktop. Um, yeah, it take, it's taking longer today for just because it's like uh, it's bad. It's my bad luck. Anyway, um, <laughs> so once 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 the Docker starts, uh, I'm going to build the image from the file. So I have this Docker file. Down and clear this. Um, then I will. So, this is my Docker file. I will create it. Build um, the Docker image and the uh, tag it. I can name it. Let's say it's my. I guess my telecom app, I don't know. And uh, tell it which uh, from where to find the Docker file so I can I can write the directory, but it's the local directory, so I'll just have a dot to, to indicate this is the local directory. Yeah, it's not going to start today, <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, okay, and once I create the image, then I could basically run a container from that. Uh, um, okay. Anyway, so um, uh, I tried. Yeah, sad. Sorry. sorry, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry.
I'm very sorry. I have we have an emergency right here, but so uh, I'm going to share the slides, and um, the next part is going to be like what's going to be ML flow. Uh, uh, so I will have to stop for the presentation today. I'm so very sorry for that, but like uh, let's continue this on Slack, and I'm going to share this um, the the slides uh, uh, also on the G drive, so you'll find it there. Okay, uh, I'm very sorry for this, but like I have some emergency right here, here at home. Okay, uh, so I'm going to stop this recording. Okay.